Scotland and United Breweries are proud to be associated with World of Sport in 82 by presenting $2,000 to the winner of the 1982 Brownlow Medal. And in this particular club corner, it's the Saints and the Tigers, Alec Jezelenko and Francis Burke with Doug Wade. Francis, firstly to you, the former of David Cloak at centre-half forward, you had a little bit of uh, a difference of opinion or the way he should have been playing last week. He came back this week and after half-time certainly moulded the forward line. Yes, oh, he's an important player, Doug, and yesterday he worked very, very hard and uh, I think that, that really was the key to his game yesterday and is the key to his game generally. And he's got the two forwards, you've got those players working well too. You, you're relying on Roach just to lead and for Taylor to stay back? Well, it's, 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 they both do both. Mm. And uh, just they work it out between them as they go, depending on how s the situation unfolds. And uh, yesterday I was happy with the, the both of them, actually, and I thought that probably was the best game they've each as individuals have played together this year, Doug. Yeah. And that was a headache to you, Alex. You had to move a player back there. In fact, then that your forward line suffered. Yes, uh, during the game, but... We also had a bit of a setback before the game, though, yes. with, with Cowie missing. So, um, yeah, but Simon O'Donnell, I thought, did a very good job when he went back. Oh, there. In the back line, but I mean, is Barker appeared, didn't appear to be all that fit or 100% fit? Uh, you got well, we all have our off days, yeah. Doug, uh, but Trevor still does uh, little things around the place that uh, you know, only Trevor can do. Well, you couldn't have been disappointed with the team yesterday. Certainly not. No. I haven't been disappointed with them all year. Um, I thought yesterday was only a couple of breaks. Had we got a couple of breaks, I thought we could have gone on. Francis, you could completely satisfied with your back line at the moment, the way it's holding together. Apart from uh, Jim Jess, uh, it doesn't seem to be attacking enough. No, we had a couple of players down yesterday, Doug, as well as the previous week. Uh, we'll be doing some more work in that area this week. Also. We had lost Graham Landy, who'd probably been performing as well as anyone down there for the last two or three weeks, and he's made a difference too. What's the state of uh, his injury? Is he? Well, he we're back? hoping he'll be right this week. Yeah. So he, he's a he's a rebound sort of attacking player, isn't he? From yes, he's just steadily improved in the time he's been at Richmond, Doug, to be quite a, an important player for us, and he's been able to play on good players as well and hold them. Well, look, uh, Alex, talking about injured players, you're missing a couple of players, and one who hasn't fronted for the whole season in Michael Roberts. What's the update on him? Well, Michael was on the training track last week, and uh, it all depends. He's had two bad ankles, not mm. only one, but two. And, um, as I said, he ran last week, uh, and it's up to Michael now to see how he can, how he can stand up with these two ankles. And, and the progress on Linky? Linky will be another six to eight weeks yet. No? Another six to eight weeks. Yes, you, you were... It must be upsetting to have those sort of injuries to, uh, to a, when you're team building. Well, to a point, yes, Doug, but you can't do anything about injuries. So, so you just have to play the players that, that, that are left. You've got a, a player, Francis, uh, on the bench, who uh, is a great... Well, he wouldn't like me saying he's a great bench player, but he certainly is to bring him, back, bring him on and kick two or three goals. That's Paul Serra. Yes, he played well for us yesterday when it mattered. He's been a bit stiff that he's... Uh, had to stand behind in line from uh, behind Robert Wiley, Dale Waitman and Barry Rowlings, but uh, to his credit, he's taken it in very good spirit and a very good approach and a terrific attitude. And uh, the times he has had opportunities, he's done well. Mm. Mm. Thanks. Oh, Doug. Oh, sorry, if we just... Yeah. Uh, Alex just would like to mention something about Barry Breen's testimonial. Oh, that's good. Oh. Go for your life, Alex. Well, on the 24th, uh, Doug, uh, on a Monday night, we're holding a testimony for Barry Breen and we'd like all St Kilda supporters to, to come along to uh, help Barry along in his, uh, his last year, we think it's his last year, uh, because he's not only been an ornament to uh, St Kilda but to the, the BFL game. Right, and uh, tickets available at the club. At the club well, you don't have to be a St Kilda supporter either, Alex. Anyone's welcome and, of course, he's contributed a lot to football and about a great personality. The Mayfair weekend a hand for the both of you. Also, the Candy Lane chocolates. You've got these magnificent SPC tomatoes. You can't beat those when you're cooking. Valentine's Tasty Entertainers from the... That's the G's. Plus this Pierre Cardin uh, tie from uh, Solway. You've also got the Red Rooster barbecued chicken. 
And not forgetting the Kenny Lane nursery uh, pot plant there with the beautiful flowers. And of course, the two of you have got uh, a big picture here of your two clubs. And uh, that's uh, Peravic, uh, uh, Perak uh, promotions, and they can be bought at uh, Merritt Hassett stores. And you'll see the bigger ad in the paper tomorrow, right? Thanks, Lou. And let's have a look at the votes for yesterday. Keel and Clape were the two who'd got the three points. And the progressive for the Canberra Ward, $450 to the leading player in each club at the end of the season. St Kilda, Saru well on top with 11. And a great battle at Richmond. Rowling's Keen on seven and Jess and Cloak on six.